Uh, but anyway, at 8.28, let's talk about our topic today, which is... Talk about our topic. of Kyoshi's blog. Uh, when a style... Or, you know, we can talk about trends too, but a style wasn't meant for you. Now, I'm going to let Kyoshi take over and kind of walk us through this, this essay and this blog post. So take it away. All right. Um, so basically, what one of the things I've discovered mm-hmm. um, since getting into deciding I want to dress better um, okay. is the unfortunate amount of clothing I have bought or tried and ended up not keeping. And one of those reasons uh, was mainly because at the time when I first started writing about menswear, it was, Tumblr was really big. And you know, you'd see right. a lot of stuff come across your dashboard, very exciting times. Um, and you see all these really, like, really cool photos of people wearing certain types of clothing. And you're like, oh, I want that. That looks cool on that person. That person's clearly cool. So I want that so I can be cool. Uh, the transitive property of buying your way into coolness. Um, right. Turns out, not accurate. Not exactly the case. Um, it's kind of like how, you know, if you decide to buy an Indiana Jones fedora, that doesn't huh. make you as cool as Indiana Jones. Um, the same thing can also be said for <laughs> many other men's clothing items. Uh, yeah. So, but anyways, um, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten better and better at realizing that certain things are... Um, definitely me and they fit my personality and my lifestyle and to wear them is to wear them. Um, it's going to sound a little corny, but authentically. And, uh, there's also items that I, I like the idea of it and I've tried it and they just don't work out for me. And one of the examples I give, um, which I'm sure we'll get into later is the Gurkha pan. Right. Um, I think it looks really awesome in photos on other people. Um, some people really pulled off really well, do some great fits with it. Um, I have tried my darndest to make it work for me. Um, but every time I look in the mirror and also just like when it's on like my, my waist, I just, I just kind of feel uncomfortable in it. And I feel like I'm fussing around with a lot of things. And at the end of the day, um, I've kind of decided, uh, it's not a style that I'm into and it's not me. And I think... Um, I think one of the things that can really kind of help improve someone's style and also save them quite a bit of money, uh, is if you kind of listen and give yourself a gut check on, uh, items that you're considering buying, or maybe you've bought and you're deciding whether or not to keep them and send them back, uh, right. if you do online shopping. Um, and it's really hard to develop that voice because one of the things I talk about is, um, there is a lot of times like a positive feedback loop, like, like, oh, that looks cool. And it still might not actually be the right thing for you. Or you see other people in cool photos wearing it, or your friends might suggest it. Or maybe when you're at a store, um, whenever those open back up again, um, you know, you might not get a salesman who's frankly honest with you that just, it's like, yeah, please buy it so I can make a commission. Right. So it's really hard to hear um that voice in your head that would uh tell you no you shouldn't buy that or no that's not meant for you or no that you know looks really terrible on you um even though in your head maybe you want it to be something that works for you and it takes a long time uh, at least it took me a long time um to get better at listening to that that voice of doubt and um knowing uh, what I actually feel comfortable in and knowing what um, is something that I think is cool for other people, but not for me. So, yeah, I think that sums it up in a very quick yeah. um, little thing here. Yeah, I, I, let me put the blog, the link here. The so blog, what blog. we're talking about. Yeah. Did we read that uh, blog? Yeah, yeah. Club yeah, check blog. it out. Uh, yeah. But, you know, yeah, because, you, you know, I see that, you know, in the blog you mentioned, like, you know, again, the talk with the salesman or everything and, and you don't necessarily say it's social media's fault, but it doesn't make it easier either. You know, but what do you, how do you think that is the best way to kind of get that, that gut check? You know, is it just about making those mistakes? You know, because I, I think some people might find it harder to find out, let's say with Gurkha shorts or pants that we'll talk about more in depth later. But, you know, it's kind of hard to give yourself that gut check until you buy it and do it. Do you think there's a way to mitigate that? 
Um, I think it helps if you, you know, it kind of depends if you have a, let's say you buy stuff out of store and you develop a relationship with a salesperson who actually do trust their opinion. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, if they tell you, they'll, they'll be honest with you say, you know what, that you should not wear that. You should not buy that. Or, you know, you should not put that on your custom suit or mm -hmm. whatever. I think that's right. a good sign that someone's actually maybe looking out for you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it takes a while though to get that trust. Um, now, if you don't right. have something like that, um, I think, you know, a co maybe a couple of close friends that are maybe in the clothes, which I know might be a bit rare, but hey, that's why we have a community like this. Uh, that's right. For, and uh, if you're, I think if one of the things, um, if you're not sure about something, uh, ask, uh, ask people, say, look, I'm considering keeping this. I'm thinking about this. Um, throw up a fit pick. And yep. see what people say, and ask them to yep. be brutally honest yeah. if you really want that honest criticism. Definitely, um, I think a lot of us, um, especially if we're trying to develop like a positive community, um, yeah. might be kind of wary of putting out criticism on that wasn't asked for. Um, so, if <laughs> yeah. you do want that kind of feedback, definitely, I would say solicit it, and yep. also make sure the people that you get the feedback from are people that whose opinion you frankly respect. Um, mm -hmm. someone who's solid, you respect. Um, I think that's really important and helpful. Uh, now if you say so you got none of those things, right. Um, or you're maybe too shy to throw up a fit pick. Um, I, one of the first things I do is just try to, the moment I put something on before I even look in the mirror, um, I try to put it on and see how I feel and kind of like listening to like what your mind is saying in that moment. Yeah before you even look at a mirror can tell you a lot. Um, you know, how does it feel like when you, if it's a pair of pants, when you sit down or a jacket, when you kind of reach your arms forward or put your hands in your pockets or you, know, you do up the, the zipper or whatever, um, just kind of get a feel for the item that you're wearing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, spend some time, like it's going to sound super vain, but spend some time in front of the mirror, take a look at it, maybe switch up the pants. If it's a jacket, maybe switch up the tops. If it's a pant, um, to see if it goes with your wardrobe. Um, one of the key things I found is if an item of clothing goes with absolutely nothing else in your wardrobe, or you think you have to buy two or three other pieces to just wear that item you just bought, chances are it's your wardrobe already telling you of things you already like and you already own that That's this true. thing doesn't belong. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, granted, you know, there's definitely things like these uh, velvet slippers I'm wearing today where, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not really a thing that goes with anything in my wardrobe, really. Yeah. But for me, it was just like, I like the cute little bird on the on the toes. And yeah, uh, yeah they're a little bit uncomfortable. But to me, just the, uh, you know, that, that bird brings me all sorts of joy. Uh, so right. that's why I kept the slippers when I got them. Um, but I think with other things like the Gurkha pants, I was thinking like, you know, I don't really wear a lot of, you know, military inspired garb or I'm looking at the way that other people are wearing it. I'm like, yeah, I don't wear a ton of stuff like that. I don't have a lot of that style of clothing in my wardrobe. Right. And um, yeah, over time, I just kind of realized, yeah, this is this wasn't the thing and time to move on past these pants and like get them to someone that maybe is more into them than I yeah. or wants to try. Them. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I really do like the point of um, where you wrote about, you know, having having someone that you like, you know, you went to the same shop for years and someone who helped you shop for years. Yeah, that's what um, to say about that. Yeah, <laughs> But just thinking, I mean, just thinking broadly, like a lot of us here, I think, I mean, everyone who you see has worked retail. And I was kind of curious how how honest you guys were with with customers, because. I unfortunately, I mean, as you know, you said it's difficult to develop that relationship where you could say, "I don't think that looks good to a customer." Well, mm -hmm. but I right. was, but you know, you, I always tried to find more polite ways to steer them towards, you know, I yeah. guess better choices. Uh, um, right. And I think, I think a lot, maybe at a, not a lot at a lot of mall stores, but at a lot of retail spaces where either it's a little bit more high end or it's like a specialized place where the, you know, people want to be there. I feel like that's, yeah. that might be the, that might be the norm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think after what... a while you kind of figure out what, like 
I guess, different archetypes of customers you, yeah. you, you get, right? So you can kind of like guess a little bit what they already want out of, you know, their shopping yeah. that day. Because so. I mean, like 80% of the time, it's always going to be someone who's going into the store to buy it specifically. They already know what they want. Mm-hmm. You right. know, it's, it's yeah. kind of like the customers that go in, it should be like, what's new at Uniqlo? What's new here? Yeah. Aren't Where are that sales, common, like? you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're not that common. I'm sure. I'm sure it's different for like you know, Kisha or for me, right? Where they come in, you know, they're like, okay, I'm here to order some shirts, but maybe let's they'll try something new. Maybe they'll order like a different jacket, or they'll commission a shirt or something like that. I think that you know, the salesman aspect of like this per- is a person you trust who has authority because they work there. That comes into play more compared to say like a like a mall brand like J Crew or Uniqlo, where you kind of. You just kind of go there and, you know, you pick out what you like already, you know. I feel like for me, it's split into like two categories. And one very predominant was that most people just going there aimlessly or just like shopping for whatever reason with like, maybe they have like a specific thing in mind or they could use, but like the other category that they're like specifics, like they ask certain questions like, okay, is this is this 100% organic materials? It is, is it made of like, is there a stretch in it? Or, you know, is there canvas in this? So, like, they have yeah, those yeah, yeah. specific needs and requirements. And then that's why I'm brutally honest. Or, like, they're asking, like, some people, like, um, my son wants a, like, a burgundy suit. And I, I look at my. Jesus? Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you better hurry up. Oh, oh, my God. You know. all. They yeah, ask for the um, burgundy suit where it's like, uh, we have a rack of blue and gray. I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and with, oh, like they ask for vests and all that stuff. Oh no, don't no, he died. Uh, R.I.P. I don't know what I expected. <laughs> but yeah, some people they have the more specific options. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, go ahead, Kyoshi. Yeah. So yeah, one of the things I've kind of noticed is there are um, people that, like Matthew was saying, that just hey, I need, I just need this thing for a thing coming up. They're very specific. But I think guys that are into clothes or what I call their entertainment shopping, mm. Um, mm. where yeah. they're visiting, you know, their tailor or they're visiting their store, or maybe they're on vacation visiting a store, like where I used to work in a resort town. It tends to be a little bit more of they don't need anything, right? It, especially right. if you're talking a higher end store. Like clearly, if you can walk in a store that's selling brioni alongside, you know, Canali. It, if you're the kind of person to afford that, you don't need anything. You probably have right. everything mm-hmm. you need. So mm-hmm. then it's just more of like a conversation of like, okay, what do you do? What's your lifestyle like? Where do you like to vacation? Um, th- that becomes kind of more of the topic of conversation. And then it's like, oh, you know, you tend to wear jeans a lot. Um, but occasionally to a couple of these nice restaurants here in this resort town, when you go on vacation you just you know you need some sort of jacket or sport coat and it's like okay let's put you in something instead of something more structured like a canali coat let's do something that's more unstructured like bullioli that you can literally ball up into uh, mm-hmm. a briefcase mm-hmm. when you're traveling so you fill in those it's, gaps. it's really about like finding you know something that kind of fits the lifestyle more so than a need and right. i think that's you know that informs a lot about the I, not so the tailoring clothing I purchased, but like the casual clothing I purchased because you know I live a certain type of lifestyle, which is like dive bars, um, you know, rock going to rock shows, stuff like that. I don't really need a lot of like fancy, delicate clothing, I prefer stuff that's a little bit more rugged and frankly, uh, you know, not as um, you know, tailored or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. I don't need like this kind of an Italian casual look. I need something right. that's maybe a little bit more grounded in like, um, yeah, you know, Americana. So you're not going out in the dad of, cap Ivy look. Yeah. And so like, mm-hmm. for me, it's like, okay, when I'm looking around for like what I want to wear at uh, times, I'm not working and shopping for those kind of clothes. I think it's always helpful to come back to what it is I actually do, not what I think. Right or aspire yeah. to maybe be doing, you know, like, this whole, yeah, I think some, sometimes you get caught up in this, like, Oh, well, if I was, you know, vacationing on the Riviera or, yeah. you know, 
at Palm Beach or yeah. you know, just all these things. And you kind of like go in this fantasy world and start. Yeah, you live by carrying the clothes or you want. Yeah. And that's, that's what's annoying about some of the, like most of the menswear bloggers or YouTubers. Like they have, they are writing or vlogging whatever from this certain lifestyle that's it's very safe. elevated. And right. yeah, they go to these things and they're not like, you know, 20 somethings, you know. So it's you know, like. Yeah, that's a good point. Parties. Yeah, because I mean, you know, we again you briefly mentioned social media there, but I think that kind of amplifies. And again, we can have a whole thing of just me talking about social media and influencers. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe in this day. Uh, but you know, I think you know it, it's definitely true that when you see all that kind of stuff, it makes you more susceptible to believing you can do that, which leads to people buying things that may not necessarily work for their lifestyle. And I think a common theme for us, again, for in this community, and a lot, you know. Um, a lot of us, Kyoshi's a new, relatively new friend of ours, but the rest of us have been friends for, you know, a year or two. We've been talking on Facebook for a little while. And we've gotten used to kind of sharing this stuff and kind of giving each other gut checks based on what we, what we know about each other. Because, again, we've been friends for a little while now. Um, and, you know, that, that's, that's also very important to kind of know internally, you know, what works within your lifestyle. And mm-hmm. that comes with kind of, you know, unrelated to menswear, but kind of becoming confident in your own right. You know, I think a lot of people out there now who know if it works for them, even if they're not into menswear, they already know what they're about. They already know what they do with their lives. They don't need they don't need a salesperson. They don't need social media. Oh, they don't even need their friend telling them what to buy. But compared right. to someone who may not be at that stage yet, may be like, okay, well, I should try this because I don't know if I like it, which, you know, I could see the merits of both ways, right? Where one, you can be really confident in your style. But then you'd be, you know, you'd be closed off to experimenting and, and not growing. Well, the other side is you don't really have a style, but you're still open minded. You know, I think the ideal menswear is having a little bit of both, right? Which mm-hmm. is again, a hard thing to to kind of come to. You know, it's you know, it kind of just depends on your personality and everything. And of course, all of us here have vastly different lifestyles, or at the very least, very different interpretations of men of menswear, of tailoring, of Americana. So that leads to kind of you know different approaches. And obviously we've all come a long way, but how, so, at least maybe back when you were still figuring things out or even elements of now, who knows, how, how susceptible do you think you all were to like be it peer pressure or salesy advice or this is what everyone's doing and oh, like, are you wide eyed? Like, oh, I, maybe I should do that without really like thinking or processing, and just jumping on it. I don't think I really did that based on peer pressure or trends. I think sometimes I okay. did that based on impulsivity. Um, sure. But I mean, what mind for that? For what about yeah? Uh, I don't know. There's some things that I find on eBay or, or some things that I found on Etsy that I got because mm-hmm. they were like you know like kind of unique and kind of cool, and they were like thirty bucks. Um, and with, I mean, with generally with stuff like that, I I don't lose too much sleep over over a lost thirty dollars. But there's uh yeah, there's been a I couple. Do. There's it's been just, a couple. Yeah, the exchange that I was like, get excited, that, right? That I was like, oh, this is pretty cheap, and I like it, and I wish I had taken yeah. like a day to think about it. Right, because we get that impulse, that like adrenaline, like oh, it's mm-hmm. exciting. Like I was thrifting, and I, it's so stupid I didn't mention it to you guys because it's embarrassing. But when I was thrifting this week, I found I just saw it. It was like a, a folded up pair of light wash Levi's. I was like, yes, I don't have this yet. And then I looked at their tag, like their written printed tag, and it said mm-hmm. waist thirty, length forty. And I was just like, <laughs> okay, uh, this works for me. And so I took it, I bought it. And then I was like, I unfolded it and I went, oh no, oh, they, they fucked it up. It was 40 waist and then 30 length or whatever. Oh. They just fucked it up on the tag. And it was a gigantic, <laughs> oh huge God. thing. Yeah. But it was not too expensive. I know. Oh, was, that, I, yeah. was that you experimenting or you seeing? Because there's a little bit of a difference between getting getting a deal and yeah. trying out a new style though you know well okay so i guess to speak to both ends it was a thing of i had research enough where it's like oh god i i saw like now what i should have seen was the actual tag on the garment but what i saw was okay levi's i saw the the general tag i saw a light wash looked at the thing good price and my size so it checked enough of the boxes that instantly i was like okay i this is this is a hole i'm filling a hole we're done uh not no more thinking about it just kind of checking it off the list but as far as experimenting, I don't know if I was 
I would say that was so much was experimenting. That was, again, kind of like I said, filling a hole, a thing I didn't have. And I could say, oh, well, yeah, the light wash cowboy cut, but this was like a staple, right? So, yeah, it was one of those things where you know those areas that you aren't quite filled in in wardrobe. So, like, if you see something that's kind of like that, you sort of, like, just take what you get almost. You're like, oh, you try to justify it in the moment. It's like, okay, that, that's going <laughs> to, without really thinking about it, thinking it through. So that was one of those moments, I guess. Yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna add on to Spencer um, that I don't think that I've like experimented with stuff like and and regretted anything. Uh, just because I've always been under the mindset of of like I can pull off anything that I wear. But I think that it's internalized to the fact where I just kind of know. Like I think a beret, I never bought it, uh, and then it was like, oh no, I don't know how to wear this. I think by the time I actually attained one, I was like, okay, I know how this is going to work out. Like, right. Love it with my tweed jacket, love it with my flannels, love it with, you know, like adding an accent over stuff. But the thing is, you know, there was kind of like a through line to it, right? Like I wore um, knit caps or beanies for a little while, and then I wore bucket hats. And so like a floppy beret kind of is the ultimate form of that, or at least a common thread to quote uh, Matt in the chat, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. callback. You know, um, my favorite doctor. So, you know, I've you know, I think that I've been fortunate in that in that regard. I think the only time that I have to come to peer pressure would be maybe more so for uh, like trying to incorporate modern or turning my wardrobe mm. into something modern, most inherently vintage. Because again, before for those of you in the chat who, I mean, based on who is in the chat, I feel like all of you who know or already listen to the blog, read the blog and listen to the He's podcast. But uh, I started yeah. out buying uh vintage clothing and that's what kind of that's kind of what i wore um in terms of tailoring and then like in my casual time and in, in like school i would wear like a you know like an untuck it or an un like a short sleeve button up whatever with some jeans some jeans and some vans or something like that and then you know trying to bridge the gap between the two i would like okay well i obviously can't wear high-waisted pants uh every day uh because people at my at people at university would kill me um <laughs> And clear, oh, cool! Like people are starting to buy like cool, like colored chinos, like like purple or or mm. or like olive. So like I got I gotta do that, right? Or I I, I think mm. I saw people wearing more minimalistic sneakers, you know, whether they were brown or white or something, as opposed to like just regular Vans. So I was like, okay, gotta do that. And so yeah, there was a, there's a little bit of that kind of stuff for me. But then I I kind of just went away from it, and then just started to literally do like how to literally pull my vintage attire into the modern day you know wearing high-waisted trousers but maybe they're not as wide as my 40s stuff um mm -hmm. you know wearing it with high side tabs and then now i'm coming coming full circle where like now i'm going back going back to wearing wide leg pants uh but they're but they're modern now i mean they're contemporary in that they're made today instead of just being vintage and i mean so, i will right. i will also say that you don't tend to jump onto trends very quickly uh, you kind of, no. I mean, it kind of seems like you yeah. like mull it over before you get into something yeah. new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Like That's kind of, what's I mean, the latest trend you've done? Um, or and, or how about this? What's the oh. thing you're mulling over right now? <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, I don't know. I mean, what tech I, are you mulling over? I guess you're playing the field. Like, the 70s influence was kind of something I mulled over for quite a while, you know, because I okay. had Chelsea boots. Because uh, again, for those of you who don't know, when I go to dates, I would wear Chelsea boots, like jeans. Um, like a crew neck t-shirt and like a short jacket as like my go-to date attire because it's like the most inoffensive thing you could wear but the Chelsea boots make it a little bit more interesting right but then you you know, date like, there is a way to wear this with tailoring I just I haven't gotten there yet and then like eventually kind of keep happening where okay if I wear it with like wide leg trousers it has the same kind of drape as a bell bottom even if the pants are straight and not a bell bottom you know so that's kind of something kind of recent that I've been kind of getting into or that I have kind of fully gotten into and it kind of worked out but that's like, yeah, like Spencer said, it's always a mulling over thing. And I think that's what, if I could teach this to anybody, you know, if, if it was possible to kind of to share a process, I mean, I, that's what it would be to, to be able to kind of, you know, don't buy into it, but keep it at the forefront of your mind, you know, have, a, have an inspiration album, which is one of our, yep. you know, number one things there. Because I think that's one way of being able to quote try out a style at least mentally without having to buy it yet you know and having an inspiration album of vintage of modern people people that you look up to it's probably the next best thing you could do um if you are not friends with that person or in contact with that person you know so, i think a lot again most of us are fortunate to be able to like talk like hey ethan you wear berets how would i do it you know but if you weren't friends with me i would assume <laughs> that you would have pictures of of me of ethan newton of people in the 30s people whatever wearing it uh go ahead kiyoshi 
So one thing I'll say, like on the topic of like inspiration boards and like, yeah. um, you know, trends and stuff like that. So I think one of the best places to pull inspiration from isn't like going to be people right now, you know, currently, especially if they work in the industry or mm -hmm. they want to be influencers or like they're the bloggers, whatever you want to call them. Like I would try not to follow anyone that is really doing this and trying to like pump up their Instagram numbers. Um, no offense, right. but what I would do instead, I think it's a lot more interesting is to try to find older photos and super easy apps. So Google image search of maybe actors or mm -hmm. historical figures or artists or musicians. Absolutely. And yeah. that, mine that, that mine that first and find, you know, eras or, you know, culture, uh, subcultures, um, that really speak to you in an interesting way. Find, yep. you know, people outside of the, the menswear realm, mm. because you're going to get so much cooler stuff. And these people might actually be cool, um, to also check out their style. And you'll also see, like, I think you'll get almost like usually a casualness, uh, um, I don't mean a casual, a, a comfort level that these people right. have with clothes because they're not clothing obsessed mm -hmm. people. No, some of them are. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, but you're going to get like how someone who's a little bit more um, average Joe thinking about clothes, but yet is a cool person, how they actually wear clothes. And yeah. I think yeah. that will oh, inform yeah. um, a, a good way to look at how people dress and how to dress um by absorbing that um whereas you know, a lot of these you know, style influencers one of our caller people like me who work in the industry that are into clothes like this is pretty much the only thing i think about probably 90 percent of the time i'm i'm awake uh mm -hmm. so it's, yeah you can tell it's, assuming, like... it's like a little too deep right so yeah. um it, it I, i'm telling you, you don't necessarily want to just focus on on um, people that are focused on clothes. Look at people who are not focused on oh, clothes. Oh, yeah. Because I find that sometimes they're the most inspiring people to pull, um, you know, uh, inspiration from that can help inform your style or help you see something new or wear something in a different way. Um, so, yeah, that would just be like my... Oh, no. Yeah, because it's like... Whenever, whenever I start... I mean, Spencer and MJ and everyone else... Uh, Again, because Kyoshi is is new to this group um, of people, but whenever I start writing about something, I always get inspiration from back in the '30s to find like you know. I always ask Spencer, "Hey, do you remember this thing? Do we have old pictures of this of this yeah. like style?" I recently, I yeah, recently right. got my inspo album, which I've been building for like years, and is now like six thousand images or something like that. <laughs> Jesus. Holy cow! Yeah. <laughs> From my phone to my from to my PC, and now I need to figure out a play a, a, a way to so, like host it on the internet, um, right? Where I don't have where I don't have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. should just make it. It's gonna take such a long time to make that many intro. Yeah, and of course, if you know, if you guys look at look at the essays that I write on my blog, I always have both both sources of inspiration. I always have a lot of old pictures in there. A lot, I mean, a lot of old pictures, and then a lot of people today. So it's kind of like. Here it is back then, here it is from people now, and then here is me doing it. That way it kind of, it's, you know, it's like a visual argument of like, see, so if you like this, here is a bunch of things you could show people to be like, see, look at all these things, people all do it, yeah. you know? And I think, that, again, that's, that's, it's, it's super important to kind of, kind of do that. I mean, and internalizing that, of course there are mistakes, you know, I... I can't think of any because I, I think I, I've been... <laughs> well, I have to say, like, I, haven't, I haven't tried a, Regrets, like a, a I've had a few. Of, uh, I haven't tried it again, like, yeah. experimented with something, and then felt like it wasn't for me. It might have been specific pieces that I, that didn't work, but then I would find another way of approximating it, you know, and like you know, and, and making it work for for my wardrobe, which is well, again, fortunate yeah. for me. You mentioned approximate. That kind of reminds me of what I was thinking of about this, because I guess my previous inspiration was like the Crosby Boys, Drake's people, like just figuring out how you mix, how you do that Ivy thing and be casual is so important for me. But like, yeah. it's not something I like, and I would literally just archive all their outfits. Like, it's so important. But like, now I don't do that as much. Uh, but what I don't even, because it's like, if you want to step further away from like, you know, moderate or just like, 
step away from like those garments itself. Cause like whether it's people that we like influencers or, you know, vintage, like they're still going to be wearing stuff we're wearing now, like the ties, tailoring and all that. So I sort of just like to look at modern people that aren't necessarily doing classic menswear, but just like, yeah. you know, fashion or anything. And then like see that and take that and apply it to things I wear. So like, okay, they wouldn't wear like a high rise kind of pant or sweat pant, but how can I take what they're kind of doing and do it with my version of it? Like combine these modern aesthetics, like you see celebrities and then just through me and my kind of Ivy lens. So it's kind of like a combining, combining and approximating uh, with your own stuff. Combining, yeah. I do it a lot. Um, yeah, so that's a on fun the, way to make it up. On the subject of like bricked fits, I can't think, I mean, I can think of really old fits that were bad, but those were always, like, I didn't okay. have the right pieces for them. You know, I think in the, in the birthday article there, I mean, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the my 16th birthday where I wore the black suit with the white shirt and black tie, I probably wouldn't do that again. But, like, in, like, uh, from the Gatsby one, oh, like, Spencer and I talked about, <laughs> uh, in the Gatsby one, um, for my 18th, oh. I wore, like, a white quote suit with like a an odd Damn. waistcoat like a, a contrast collar shirt and like a rep tie like that one I mean, especially when i both agree that it wasn't inherently bad you know maybe because it's like two two button oh well there's nothing wrong with two buttons but like you know the like really skinny lapels the fact that you know the trousers don't match the trousers are really weird you know and of course like the really odd gray worsted waistcoat like that that could be kind of bad but those ideas can still be translated so i don't th- i don't think i've exactly had like a bricked Fit. at least when i started getting into it i mean maybe before all of that there's some really bad outfits that just didn't work because i didn't know the rules or the vocabulary to yeah. express myself yeah effectively i mean i have a lot uh, of fit, i have a lot of fits that i'm not necessarily i mean kind of embarrassed by like a lot of my true vintage fits but not well not really embarrassed it's just not my style now but i think if you're just yeah, judging if you're just yeah. judging a true vintage outfit it's not bad um yeah, yeah exactly it's i mean solid, there's always you know. like, it's you know that's kind of like a difference uh between the whole thing too where um finding out whether something is your style because the thing with trends is that trends get a bad rap and they kind of you know they, they kind of are uh within classic men's where they're a little bit rarer they're still they still are you know like i mean the loha shirt for the past maybe like three years has been like a big thing and that's not really a bad thing because Aloha shirts have been around for like a hundred years. And so, you know, it's not it's not a bad idea to incorporate them because they're probably not gonna go away anytime soon. They might not they might be out of like the forefront of menswear, but you know, they they've been around. You know, I, I think that being able to see that is really important. You can't really judge it um and say, well, that's like a trend, you know, it's gonna go out of style because a lot of things that we do were trendy or can be considered a trend, but if we keep doing them after they they're out of the current vogue, it becomes like our thing, you know. And I think that's also kind of important. Where you know, I mean, Spencer and I've been wearing jungle jackets. We got that from from you know, not just yeah. looking at uh, '60s um, <laughs> '60s stuff, uh, but also the fact that from you know, Bryson's guys wear them, and now uh, the, you know they're being made by different people. I mean, there's uh, Ascot Chang makes them because I told them. Um, you know, Drake's has <laughs> them now, uh, and you, you know, it, it's really it's really cool to see. So, hey, what do we think about the Drake's one? Because I don't like it's too that short. It, yeah, well, I also don't like that it doesn't have the pleat on the pockets. <clears throat> and when, I mean, that's, that's just what, kind of that's you just, know, I mean, but that's what makes these yeah. jackets cool. That's what makes them cool. Yeah, specifically. they kind of mellow out. And so can you um, put the link up for that? Do I what? The link up for the uh, link. Oh yeah, uh, you just look up Drake's jungle jacket. I'm oh, sure you can find yeah. it. It's the rip. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, I did think also seven hundred dollars. Uh, that can't. Eight, that can't. That's yeah, expensive. Eight hundred eighty-five. Yeah. Um, but I was gonna say I did think of something that's a trend-ish that I'm kind of doing right now, and it's the utility vest. That is very yeah. interesting because, because I started. Um, obviously, I look at everything. I mean, I'm still subscribed you to Archery Wear. And, you know, the utility vest, the fishing vest has been like kind of a thing in streetwear for a lot lately. Uh, you know, if you wear it with like a t-shirt, you wear it with like over a hoodie or something, um, the tactical vest, whatever you want to call it. It's been kind of, you know, on trend, I guess, for the past year. But to me, uh, it kind of reminds me of when workwear guys wore like the Browns beach vest. 
or when guys wear like workwear vests. So there's a lot of like this idea of like a tactical waistcoat or whatever you want to call it that waistcoat. kind of blends utilitarian, military style, workwear style, you know, with the irreverence of streetwear, but still kind of, you know, it's still kind of related to this col- this uh, idea of vintage or classic menswear. And so it's been stewing in my head for a little while. And thankfully, um, I was able to try it out because Informale made one, made 100% cotton. I'm kind of wearing it. It's still a little tricky for me. But I know that I will wear it, and I know that I can wear it. And, I mean, that just could be because I've been doing, I've been writing about men's for like five years and kind of experimenting. And, again, if you look at the whole birthday article, each year gets, you know, at least, bef- you know, before I was 22, the the exponential growth, I guess, is, is very high. And compared to now where it's a little bit, you know, it's tapering off as I get more and more confident in the style that I'm doing. Um, but you know, yeah, see, it's kind of proof that, you know, even if we are confident, we still like to try some new things. Um, we like to try the hard part. is, Yeah. The hard part is finding out when they're not exactly right for you. You know, I think, I feel like I have a pretty, I'm pretty good at just like trusting my gut at this point. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, every once in a while I still buy something that I'm like, ah, I don't really need this, or ah, this isn't really for me. I mean, you but have then, the, then... Uh, the, what about the, the uh, that's a good thing, because we were talking about this all just, just as a friend chat, we weren't in the, uh, you know, streaming or anything, but the uh, the captain's hat, or the marine cap, yeah, or whatever, yeah. from no, right, I still yeah. like Quaker Marine. I still like that. Though. Yeah, well, what, what, can you talk, tell us a little bit about oh, that Oh, yeah, one? yeah, so Quaker, so, like a, I, bought, I mean, that was like, that was like a very, I mean, you know, I make, I have... I make impulsive buying decisions sometime. That was something that I saw that morning on Instagram on the wooden sleepers feed. And I think, <laughs> and I think bought it either that evening or the next day. Wow. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's like, it's a very kind of like, 19- you hear that Brian Davis, you're an influencer, <laughs> but here's the thing: I didn't buy it from wooden sleepers. I bought it direct from uh, Quaker Marine because they don't charge for shipping. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but no, I mean, so yeah, it's just a very, it's like a very kind of like old school the roll up yacht cap, right? Yeah, like old school East Coast, like you would see it on workers, like on the on the docks, um, <laughs> in like the I don't know, like the fifties and sixties. Uh, and I was I was like, ooh, do I want that or do I want the oyster cap, which was famously worn by Ernest Hemingway and is a little bit more of a conventional yeah. style. Where it's just kind of a baseball cap with an elongated like a long bill, brim. Yeah. yeah, elongated brim that is like patent leather. Um, but I kind of wanted to do the uh, do the 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 captain's hat because I don't know. It reminded me of things that I've seen other people wear. I could be remembering this wrong, but I think like uh, Keith, like Vintage Warrior or whatever, doesn't he? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or like um, I don't know. There's a couple of people I follow on Instagram who have done stuff like this, and uh, I haven't. I've I've only worn it a couple times, but that's because I mean, obviously, COVID. Yeah. Yeah, but I really, I really do like it, and I'm looking forward to the the the, the summer that I do get to wear it out more frequently. Like I think it would be great to wear to the beach. You know, I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like it's it's like I I've worn it I've worn it in my pool. Like it's because it, you can do that. It's cool. See, I think the, the important thing there is is when you when you're able to find out, like when you're able to look at these things and not see them as like a new, uh, a, a new piece to experiment with. It's more so uh, like a, a through line, or or as uh, as Matt has said, a common thread. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's 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 about that. We're like, okay, Spencer, you know, shaved his head. He has to wear a lot of ball caps, right? So mm-hmm. then go from like you know you wear ebbets field flannel uh ball, you know vintage style ball caps and then you start wearing kind of like dad hats or whatever you know as a you know they're less vintage but they still got personality then you know we get to this the quaker marine uh the cap where it conventionally is you know it fits on your head and has a little brim at the front but it has a little bit more personality so it's yeah. kind of it's like it's a choice it, it kind of like it calls more attention to itself than like well, it's about right. it's, yeah it's like the whole uh casual style article where it's about just it's all alternatives uh, you know, or making analogies to other things, mm-hmm. right? Where instead of wearing, you know, jeans, slim jeans, why don't you try like a wide leg jean? They're just a more interesting, different, intentional yeah. choice. Or, than, or take like the beret, for instance, when I was thrifting, I saw like red wool berets. And so my thing is that like, you know, I've seen obviously Ethan Ware and Chase wore it like once, like with a barber and like a whole a little tailoring setup. It was such a cool photo. 
And they're just like, oh, wouldn't that be interesting? But I just, I feel like for me personally, I know myself enough where it's just like, you know that this might be a gamble to try it and that this might not be as successful as wearing it just like a regular dad cap with it or like knit cap. So it's like, you you know internally you might have this struggle with this thing, but you know there might be a payoff if it works out or something like that. Like, or just like the versatility of the thing, you know? So you kind of have to make those decisions at a certain point. Yeah. And I think also the fact that we're a lot younger uh, or, you know, we're at earlier stages in our life and career compared to Kiyoshi, I think that it makes our purchases a little bit more. Well, the, based on all this, all these guys say, well, sometimes I just take a gamble. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> but I think that right. because of that, we tend to know ourselves a little bit better or we force ourselves to kind of do that where it's like, okay, this is like, you know, a hundred bucks try or, you know, 50 or 30, whatever. Is this worth it? Is that worth it to me to try something or try this new garment out you know, that I can't yeah. try on or, or whatever. And so, at the end of the day, it's, it becomes either you lose the money on it or you don't. You just take, you absorb you it. take and the like, money. Well, I'm going to make it work for me <laughs> because, the money. I've spent, because I've spent <laughs> money. And I think that's also one reason why for me, too, where I'm, as we've said before, I'm very picky about certain things. That's why I go through a lot of like this, this, uh, uh, bullying it over phase, right? And that's why whenever uh-huh. I articles about these pieces they're very long because i take you literally with me through that journey of i saw this here took a while for me to get into it look at all this inspiration then i finally bought into it you know so we i well at least for for me spending money is still something i don't like doing unless i know exactly what i'm getting or if i know exactly i'm gonna wear it but the good thing is is that when i do it i don't i don't have a brick fit you know yeah Wait, yeah, because, I mean, the whole thing of a brick fit is, like, we all mess up, but it's, like, it's all still experience. Like, oh, now yeah, I know to yeah. be double, double sure to check measurements of things, you know, just buy based off what someone writes on the tag, you know? Maybe bring a tailor's tape to things. I looked out on the Johnny Carson suit. I literally just tried the jacket on, and I was like, fine. I didn't. I had no mirror, but I was just like, okay, this, this works. I see these things, but, like, and the pants fit perfectly, but, again, I did not try those on. So bringing in Taylor's tape and just like these other things, these other details, like, you know, for the future, it's all experience, good or bad. Like an all in your future person. Can you wear the suit? Can you do uh, a Johnny Carson impression? Uh, <laughs> he gets <laughs> instantly more awkward. Just right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, speaking of, uh, now I'll just, you know, speaking up now, I'm curious because I'll just, you know, again, compared to us, you have a bit more of a conservative style. <laughs> At least in terms yeah. of also, like, mind and, mind and, and everything, yes. So yeah. I'm curious to what you think about you know trying something out for yourself, um, and you know, of course, I don't know if you've because I mean, we, you know, when we were talking about like experimenting the other day, something yeah. I thought about is you have been buying a lot more, uh, like reproduction military stuff recently. So is that something that you've always been into, or is that kind of more of an experiment? Yeah, it was always something I, I, I think it was always something I was kind of into, but mm. because I was buying a made to order stuff and thus lost large chunks of my wallet every time I bought something, yeah. it was taking me a while mm-hmm. to get there. Um, in terms of following trends, I started out with a fear that I would become a slave to trends. So I think to that end, I deliberately avoided places like MFA mm. and looking too much at, um, at, at, at like the standard places that pops up when you search the menswear and google search like real man real style what was, like what was a trend for you what do you what did you consider a trend i don't know what trends are that's the problem because i avoided them i can't actually name i like i'm probably quite unaware of what the current trends are today i wouldn't i just rig yeah huh. i never really sorry it's cool <laughs> right mm-hmm. we, we're yeah, a fan really we're trying trying to blog right now yeah, and perhaps that's to my detriment, to be honest, because now I'm I've gone to a point where I kind of know myself and I can look right. at things and look at inspiration oh, and, nice. and see. So what, you were scared about the con- like the concept of of being a slave to trend, but then you just you didn't really know what they were. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't. I but I deliberately didn't want to know what they were, so I wouldn't be a slave sure. at all. That was not yeah. a bad not a bad strategy, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, but now I guess there's a bit of a bit of regret in that. I really don't know what the trends are, and I don't really. I don't have as broad a knowledge of menswear as you guys do. Like when, like when you brought up the idea of, um, brought up what was it, the uh, oyster cap? I had no idea what that was. For example, I had to Google that, 
and I um, mean, I didn't know what it was because, until I saw them and the well, sleepers. Yeah, but, then, but the thing is, Spencer, I just heard of the first seen it before. Yeah, right? we've like, seen it before. I just never knew what it was yeah. called. Yeah, well, I never seen. Just, I never seen it before okay, either. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I guess maybe you know, this it might be it might be interesting for our audience to know. How do you pick an outfit, all just like I mean, and how do you get inspiration from it? Because you know, I'm sure you. I mean, you you like golden era stuff as much as we do, at least you know, in terms yeah. of like in the past, right? So, did you ever compile images back then and be like, okay, this is really cool? Because I mean, you know, with, with the whole J pressing, you clearly, I mean, you had that picture saved, and I've I've seen that picture too, uh, of yeah. that J press 1930s three roll two jacket. Um, but I'm I'm a little curious about about that aspect of it. And keep talking. I'm gonna pee, but I can still hear you because I've got headphones. <laughs> Right, right. Nice. Well, I do save images, but certainly not to the extent that Spencer has six thousand images. Christ, mate! But again, that's, 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 since, that's, that's over board. years. Yeah. That's since high school. Right. Yeah, we've all got that. Mm. Yeah. Well, I haven't been in this, in this as long as you have, but I've still been in it for a few years at least, and I have nothing even close to that. So, I mean, kudos to you for providing such mm. a large database. Uh, I did look at images, I guess. Um, the way I got into menswear was. For some reason, I got obsessed with Fred Astaire and his white tie rig, and it sort of branched out from there. So I guess right. when I started, I was looking up at a lot of images of Fred Astaire and the first and forces and stuff that he did there. And then afterwards, I went to um, went to quote unquote guide places like the Gentleman's Gazette and uh, mm. Room and Stuff, <laughs> sort of, but only to just know what the stuff in the pictures was because coming at it from a blank slate, I didn't even know like, I didn't know what double events were, so I had to learn about that at least. But uh, I actually tried not to stay in there too long because I didn't. Even then, I thought that following being a slave to rules was not something that uh, not something that stylish guys did. So mm. I tried to avoid that. Um, I lost the thread of the question. I went off. On well, the I was going to say, what what do you do now? Like in your current dressing up, like where do you take cues from? Do you have archives? Do you go to see what people are posting on social media? Uh, movies you like, uh, just other fits you've done, other versions of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably social media mostly. Uh, mm -hmm. I follow all you guys, and Ethan's always posting pictures. He's posting pictures daily, so I always check like that and see if there's anything that catches my eye. Same for the rest of you guys. What's the wildest thing you've tried since maybe you saw yeah. something someone posted on social media, and you're like, oh well, I'll it's a little off the beaten path of what I do, but maybe I'll give it a shot. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be a trend. It it can just yeah. be like a thing that you haven't tried. A thing you don't do. Yeah, uh, that thing you don't do. Right, well, <laughs> famous, time famous time. movie. Yeah, <laughs> ten things you don't do. Number one. Just well, I'm. Well, I'm still kind of cautious, and perhaps to a fault. So there's a lot of stuff. There's not much stuff that I've tried recently that I uh, that was a bit of a risk. But there's a stuff yeah. I'm looking at that I'd like to try. Uh, we've all brought up the beret. Okay. Head. That's also something I'm. I've been. Yeah. You rock a beret. I can see it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm still not sure yet, but I'm I'm leaning in that sure. direction. I think. Right. Um, It'll happen, baby. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, also vest as well. I there was a, there was a part when I came really I close to getting too. like a repro flak vest and seeing like all that off as a summer. Repro candy. flak vest from where? Uh, what price glory? I think, but I'm sure automakers make them as well. I'm so, gonna look it up and see what it looks like. Uh, yeah. It's... So flak vests. These are those bigger military outerwear vests, right? Yeah. Well, as the name implies, they were flak vests. Originally, they contained armor, armor, armor plates, but they were. Oh jeez. Like, five, five pieces or. Uh, three pieces, yeah. You yeah, three pieces? Yeah, no, I think it was a little Call of Duty Warzone ref. So there's stuff like that, but I mean, to this day, I'm still rather cautious. I haven't bought, I, I've forced all that stuff, and I haven't bought any of it. Um, sure. Right. Very well, might try it down the line, though. Um, yeah. It, 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 I guess my decision when, uh, when it comes to things like that, things I'm on the fence on is price really it's like what spencer was saying when he was getting vintage suits like he didn't know what if he'd like them or not but it was 30 bucks so why not that's 30 bucks is the amount of money i can live with losing completely if it does come to that although hopefully it won't i can't and nope <laughs> nope <laughs> the penny theory yeah that's uh, mcdonald's money uh what one thing I mean, oh let's hear you go yeah, one thing uh, we were talking earlier about looking at old photos of grass from inspiration and why that's why we'd all recommend that. Uh, on top of what you guys said, though, I'd like to add that in old photos, there's a sense of 
there's a sense of utility that you don't really get with uh, modern influences. And by that, I mean in the 30s and 40s when suits were quite common and worn just as everyday wear, really. You see pictures of guys going to like the ballpark and they've got a newspaper in their pocket and they're eating a hot dog and you get that. And, and if you study that, you get an idea of how to look casual, look slouchy, look comfortable. Mm -hmm. in clothing, hey, you said the S word, that's my word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry right. for infringing the trademark there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, you get an idea of how to be slouchy from old pictures uh, that right. you might not get from a lot of influence, influencers no. who seem uh, to give yeah. off the impression that, yeah, who a lot of them seem to give off the impression that they dressed up just for that photo shoot and and that's it. Well, that's, I mean, that that's why you follow people who are, even, I mean, yeah, no, Kiyoshi said about the industry, which is, it's just true. We we definitely think about clothing way differently than the average person. Um, Bam, fair. But to be to be fair, but it's also important you know, to I think you know there's a better you get better stuff say by following. I don't know. I guess Mark Cho technically is a little bit harder because you know he does have a business. Most of these guys do have a business where they can uh, technically benefit monetarily from their following, right? I mean, same thing with. I mean, I guess for me it's less about. I don't have monetized anything other than the podcast itself. I guess. Um, but if, hey, if everyone out there started to dress slouchy and wear a beret, I count that as a victory, even if there is no money involved. But <laughs> making but the world a better a place. Of, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, you know, when you fall like like uh, Matt talked about the Crosby Street Boys, who I guess now are the J Muser guys. Um, mm -hmm. You follow them again. Yes, of course they work in the industry. There is that sense of you know they, they they're not a normal person, but the content that they do, uh, hopefully at least to me, comes out like you're getting a little glimpse of their lives. You know, they're not. Not everything is um, like a professional shoot, and they might have a really great camera. I mean, same thing with me. I use a, a great camera. I take really, if I do say so myself, good pictures. But I hope that you know, whenever I'm actually out, I you know, I take random pictures of MJ drinking boba randomly or or whatever. That it shows that even though we like clothes, we are still able to live a normal life especially you know i'll go to a super smash tournament i wore like a aloha shirt like a chore jacket because it happened to be what i'm wearing that day i mean i'm not gonna yeah. be stupid enough to wear a suit to that kind of thing but you know, mm -hmm. I, you know i'll be i'll be who i am and i think that's what's really important that's something I, i've been missing certainly as 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 covid has put a dampener on social gatherings but i still love my best stuff my best pictures that i've ever taken are never of myself they're always pictures of my friends doing stuff that we're just kind of hanging out. Of course, again, compared to say like our other friends, Scott, Swoon PM, you know, who aren't, who don't do menswear like at all, you know, of course to him, MJ and I are outliers in terms of the clothes that we buy and how we present it. But, you know, uh, we still do the, a lot of the same things. Otherwise we wouldn't be friends. Right. And mm -hmm. like, throwing that off is way more important to kind of, have this uh, again common thread to how it was back in the 30s where you know photographers would take pictures of regular guys at diners at the ballpark at at the bars playing pool you know wearing suits because that happened to be what they were doing and hopefully if you were able to look at those things um you'll be able to kind of see okay look at how many look they're wearing a collar bar huh and they're at the ball game maybe i can wear it and have the same kind of effect and the thing is you know, it's not just about wearing it and evoking those same, uh, those same um, ideas, but also like, what is what is the ball game to you, right? I think, I think the ball game is baseball. Oh, like, ah, we cracked the code. Yeah. There it is. But yeah. you know, I mean, you know, like obviously, like I don't, I don't, I don't play sports. I don't really go out drinking that much. Um, although you I don't drink I, coffee. I feel like a casual bar, maybe not like a super divey bar, but also certainly not like a lounge bar. But you know, especially when I go to decent places that we kind of hang out at i think a boba shop would be like my version of that and you know i'm saying i go to those places we'll wear whatever the hell we're wearing right and like, that kind of hopefully is the kind of content you should look at you know seeing not the production value pictures not the look books but you know like the pictures of michael hill in like in the office or something or or even just a bunch of all these other rugged ivy guys that we follow who definitely don't work in the industry maybe they might resell things but they are more normal than you know mark cho or or whoever and i think getting inspiration from those guys especially for spencer is what he gets a lot of his inspiration from at mm -hmm. least from modern people right so, well yeah, i think i think the ideal is if you can go straight to the modern people that you mentioned like alex Winchell and the, 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 the chase winfrey and the rest of those drake boys and even mark cho maybe uh that would be great um i i don't think you have to go through the uh go through the realm of 
the golden age of Hollywood first. But yeah, at least in my experience, that was a sort of it was easier to find pictures of Fred Astaire than it was to like I didn't know who the hell Mark Cho was. I didn't know Alex Winch. I that mean, only three, yeah, yeah. It's only finding these people. Like photos, and that's how I found these guys. Yeah. Uh, we straight away from the original uh, topic though, which was um, how to determine if a style or trend was meant for me, and I guess if I could speak as to how I approach, how I would approach. Go ahead, it, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Please how do. I determine if something was. Yeah. So how I determine if something uh, was right for me is, well, first and foremost, I think it's just it's just a gut feeling. Um, now, absolutely. My my gut feeling developed over time, but I think it was. I, I think even even if you look at the very beginning, I was still pretty consistent. There was nothing back then that I my gut told me that I would like that. In hindsight, I now hate. It was always at least in the right direction, but maybe not terribly accurate, but in points in the right direction. Right. So gut feeling has to be the most important facts for me uh, in determining whether a trend is right for you. If you see the trend, then you're absolutely in love with it. It doesn't matter if it's... It, it doesn't matter. I don't think you should, should care about your surroundings or uh, if you have the right occasion to pull it off. You sh you really should get it by that point. That trumps all, at least in my mind. Um, after that, though, if you're in a position where you're not entirely sure if you love it or not, you're on the fence somewhere as to... Uh, your gut's on the fence, so to speak. If your gut was on I the fence, it off the fence. Dead, yeah. if your gut, yes, <laughs> yeah, if your gut's on the fence, um, I think then you should <laughs> see a doctor. <laughs> Love it yeah. or leave it. Yeah. See, see a doctor. You should have that really put back in. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and that's but, our main takeaway. Yeah. If you're on the fence, though, I think you should look at um, just look at how popular it is. Maybe not not even among the influencers, influencers, but in general. Um, so, I guess to apply to specific examples, the beret. Um, I'm not sure if I like it or not, if my gut likes it or not. It's, I'm leaning towards I like it, but I'm not sure. You got to so taste it first. Like, yeah, yeah it taste that It also helps, you know, people wet. actually try it on. I mean, that's why, like, I, I, you know, even though I bought a lot of my wardrobe on eBay, at least in the beginning stages, now I exclusively like to try and, like, to buy things in person. I will, you know, that's why I go flea market shopping or I'll go to, like, you know, like the bloke to try on that particular ring jacket, the same model. Right, because... Yeah. The R. Mm -hmm. look. Um, but that is literally like kind of the way for me to kind of get into it. I didn't buy a beret. I never, I mean, I didn't find one until, you know, again, like maybe a year and a half ago. But I did it because I remember stories of my mom saying that when she was a cool indie kid back in college, she would wear beret around. And I was like, they, I'm, I'm sure I've seen it. I've seen my grandma wear it. And so if I. I went, you know, I'm always at my Lola's house a lot. So I said, hey, Lola, do you have mom's old beret? She goes, oh, yeah, I got like three of them. I'm like, oh, six. I try it on. I, you know, I'm wearing, I mean, I was wearing a sports shirt that day because, you know, it's a casual day. And I'm like, oh, there it is. I know I'm into it now, you know, because it's like I was able to finally kind of do it. And that definitely helps with, with, being able to try out a trend and and yeah, as, you, you guys are lucky in LA though you, you, you can't yeah you've got to remember that's, that that's true that's yeah, that is is much definitely true in person. yeah like and if I just in person beret I wouldn't really know where to begin here I mean yeah it's, it's, it's a little bit harder right now yeah yeah um, I mean that's, I, that's I, the I, reason why I in the blog I never give recommendations I always try to say try it out but I leave it to you to find out how to do it because I <laughs> I know that I know that being in LA um, and being around all the vintage and having like the eye for eBay is kind of like an inherent thing that if you don't, if you, you know it when you see it. So, and that's kind of hard yeah. to recommend to people. I would just and, say yeah. you know, a life hack would be just buy the cheapest beret possible off Amazon with free return shipping. There you go. At yeah. home, and, and then you're going to send it back anyway. So it doesn't matter because it's a cheap, cheap beret. And you don't even like but you can right. see if you like the way it looks on your head. I feel mm. like that's like the first step is like, oh, oh the way of course, it looks yeah. on my head yeah. look good. I and think then, that works. Yeah, if, if that's an option available so. to you and, it's, and, yeah. and it works, well, and, and it certainly is for the beret because you can get one for really cheap. But what about what about things that you really can't get cheap? Like if there's Thank a particular you. jacket that's style that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you do have to develop a sense of um, being able to gauge something about having a try on of some sort. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, think that's why uh, LA so is so blessed. For I mean, we're so blessed up in LA because most of the things that Spencer and I want to try, we can find for cheap. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, Stuck on that, like? everybody else, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I will say, like, I know there's 
probably some um, some hesitation to do stuff like eBay or Grailed or Etsy just because like, oh, if it doesn't fit and all that. But uh, I would say if it's a totally new style and it's maybe not exactly what you want, but it's like crazy cheap um, to do and pick up, then, you know, if your budget allows – uh, I'd right. say just like go for the cheapest version of something you can yeah. possibly get used, beat up. Maybe it's got a gnarly stain on it. Who cares? Um, you know, if it's like 10 bucks shipped to you um, and you can try it on and just see if you like the idea of a jacket or a pant or whatever. Um, you know, I, you know, that's a, I think can be an easy way to, to kind of try on something and get an idea of, you know, that you like the way it fits or feels. Yeah, and then you just, yeah. then you kind of invest like, okay. Cause they're that like a $10 tax on finding, um, you know, the actual item you want later on, you know, that don't buy the high retail quality. version. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's definitely I, again. The problem with that though, is that there isn't always a perfect substitute like that to work with, right. uh, depending on what you're looking at. And, and it, it, I, think it, it don't want to, I think we're talking about like looking on the internet. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah like, but still, you don't want to nerf your experience, and then it kind of like turns you. You have to meet in the middle, right? You can't just yeah. go completely like. You what do, do I want to get as close to like you know? I guess your Grail yeah. version of that. Piece. Like, what would be an example? Like a Grail, but then like a shitty version of it. I'm trying to think. Like, how uh, how big of a departure? Well, an example, uh, an easy one is berets. I mean, black berets. Yeah. You find them at all price points, but like a harder thing would be. Like the uh, J Press jacket I, I got earlier, I wanted something in that sort of a brand check with a orange uh, window pane over check. Uh huh. It's hard to find a finding the right version of that, that garment. It's hard to find yeah. that to begin with, um, and let alone a cheap and in a cut that you and, like. And, and hey, That's same thing for me too, right? With like, I wanted a brown check jacket that was good for summer. And either you'd find like the right ones in in winter fabrics, or the summer ones are always. I hate this problem where. You know, contemporary mentor brands always have like really light color jackets mm -hmm. for some of they never yeah. they never just do like a dark chocolate or you know, of course you do bespoke, whatever, but like in ready to wear stuff, they seldom do that, at least for uh, at least for being affordable for me, right? So this is why I as soon as I saw the Spear McKay one, I was like, Okay, here it is. You know? Yeah, I was gonna say, does that one have a red or orange over plaid? No, it just, or... no, it's, it's just the regular plaid. There's no overcheck to it. Okay, right. Okay. I want to. I want to get to the chat because I, I mentioned it earlier. But here we go. So take a virus says, if he's never really sure about something, he usually gets it on cheap on eBay or thrift. Yep, just like Kiyoshi says, you got to find the cheapest avenue to kind of try it. Again, eBay thrifting is probably easier for certain things. Um, mm -hmm. but, you know, it might be harder to find. Like if you want to try like the easy pant, you probably aren't going to find a really good elastic waist pant on eBay or thrifting. Right. Uh, you know, but that's why places like Uniqlo again fast fashion brands or, or you know cheap brands are a little iffy capitalism and sustainable <laughs> yeah. stuff but you know it's one of those things where hopefully if you're into it you'll keep wearing it like for me i i have i have uniqlo stuff that i've had for like four years and i keep wearing it because you know uh i don't want to contribute to like okay uh trading off we again kind of related to what Aldrich and I talked about last time, which you know we could talk about upgrading wardrobes in the future, future right. stream or something. Uh, Double breast waistcoat says, "I remember one pity Womo a few years ago when people were wearing uh, pajama shirts huh. with tail. You want to try it out, but never did." And he You've said, done that. I was, I was going to uh, comment about his comment, saying there was. I don't want to name him because of the thing I'm going to say. Like there is a great person we look up to who he wore an outfit out and to like a press event associated with his workplace, wearing like. I, what Sleepy Jones maybe like pajamas like a striped like red white striped pajamas as his outfit and he wore like a he had like a white crew neck t-shirt underneath and some slippers or something and that kind of ended badly for his current job <laughs> him wearing that it was such a big know, departure I don't know if that was I don't know if it was exactly that reason but maybe okay. he, he, maybe he maybe it's more like he skipped work to go to the event. I don't know who knows. I see. Okay, um, I didn't but, know. Was, uh, uh, okay, so especially this I tried to say. Anyway, I don't have an issue with pajama, wearing pajama shirts. I don't. I have more of an issue with like the pajama style shirt, like, mm -hmm. you know, like with, the, with the pipe with the piping on it, because to me that trend just basically means wearing a camp collar shirt with a suit, and that has historical precedent for it. That has a lot of different stuff. So that's why I was okay with it, and I have a I have a camp collar shirt that. 
I am not sure exactly what it is. Uh, when I bought it, the person said it could be a pajama shirt because it's got kind of these big mother of pearl buttons. Uh, the feeling of it isn't really pajama fabric, but then again, people did wear regular co- cotton poplin shirts. So could be a pajama shirt, could just be a standard casual shirt. Who knows? I mean, the, the pattern's kind of fun. They never found pant- matching pants for it. It was just a shirt. So who knows? But to me, the pajama shirt is a bit of a trend, like the specific like piping on the collar and the yeah. placket. That's a little bit weird. But the idea of wearing a camp collar shirt with tailoring, no problem with that. Again, not really a trend, even though it is kind of a trend in the men's wear space. To me, it was like, well, 1930s, 1940s, 1950s all did that. And it's all variations, right? You have like the rayon gabardine sport shirts. You have like, mm-hmm. the, uh, the chambray ones. You got the work workish ones. You got an Aloha shirt is a camp collar shirt. It's a sport shirt. So there's a lot of different ways to kind of go about it. So I wouldn't say, especially if you like vintage, you want to find a way to, of, of incorporating it now. It's not really a trend. It's more like, okay, seeing the trend, seeing what the original version of it is, and seeing if you like that original version, because that's how it is for me. Like, seeing, you know, again, Ethan Newton, these guys wearing berets. I had seen berets before with that, even though I like to say, like, I got inspiration from them. I have seen illustrations from the 1930s of, like, French tailoring ads where guys are wearing fedoras and berets yeah and there are a bunch yeah. of, of the There's 30s like outside. a bunch of like esquire illustrations like lawrence fellows exactly. illustrations of, of people wearing berets in europe in the 30s yeah and so i mean of, of course it's 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 hard to find those things but thanks to uh like our friend florian who has a great great tumblr i mean not all of it is his content but he reblogs some great sartorial stuff things are fairly organized so you can just kind of use the search bar it's golden i'm gonna put it here golden era suits.tumblr.com again i've been i've, I've been i've been facebook friends with florian for i don't know like eight years because you know yeah. again fedora lounge and stuff like that spencer and i have known him for such a long time that you know i routinely go to his tumblr to find you know pictures that i might have seen years ago when i'm writing an article about you know like like now work vests right or, or utility vests finding see finding people wearing chambray work vests wearing brown's beach stuff it's all there he's his stuff tends, tends to go a little bit more tailored but again most of those trends that we talk about most of the styles have precedent in 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 history um you know you might not be able to find i don't know easy pants that might be a little bit harder to see you know vintage stuff versions of that but you know seeing guys wear you know a uh, a long sleeve polo shirt with a wide leg trouser, you could say, okay, if the wide leg trousers just had an elastic waist instead of a belt loop or Hollywood waist trouser, uh, the uh, the common commonalities are there, you know. And developing that taste of of intentional uh, alternatives is hard to kind of do because, mm-hmm. you know, like like we've said repeatedly throughout all of this, you can't always just try it on and, and see the commonalities of whatever the cheapest option is. Sometimes it does help to try on the uh, the actual item. But if you have an open mind, you know, finding the, those those analogies to your wardrobe or even the cheap version of what you're trying to do uh, can help. Like, again, for me, the beret didn't just start out with the beret. It, was, it started out with me wearing a knit cap with tailoring. And that kind of went from there.